Good morning. Yeah. How's it? Uh, everything's fine. And how about you? Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I have heard the song that you uh you sang with uh why you blame the guitar. But uh, you know, I cannot uh, hear it clearly because maybe of the because of the the, the zoom, you have to yeah. turn. It was filtered. I, I didn't set up the filter properly. Uh yeah. Yeah, sorry about you that. You know, I, uh, I I got the same problem with you. Uh, but then when I uh, turn on the original cell for musician, and uh, it can re reduce the. Uh, you know the 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 cell got better. Okay, when when you turn on the original cell, for instance. Yeah, yeah, I know. I I I think I failed to turn it on properly. I thought I was yeah. turning. It on. Okay. Anyway, well, well, let's pray if you're ready to study. Yeah. Uh, dear Father in heaven, we invite your Spirit into our lives, into our hearts, into our homes, into all that we do. It's all we come in contact, with all we say, with all we see and hear. And we just ask, Lord, that uh, we can have a view of Christ, we can see him clearly, and that he can be real to us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, so I had a pretty interesting week. Um, my... Uh, my wife had been going through a lot of pain uh, uh, related to trauma. And um, on Monday, God told me to, to pray over her. And I did that, and she was instantly healed. Uh, so so she's, she has never felt like this in her entire life. She's never felt so free of pain. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so she was she was anointed by Jeff back in 2016, and that got rid of her fibromyalgia and um, the voices in her head that she used to have, um, her parents' voices screaming at her. Yeah. So, so that was quite something for her then, but this is equally just as as powerful and uh so it was kind of interesting anyway do you have certain questions today oh uh actually i um i, I don't have any question because um Still there to lesson that I uh, haven't uh, uh, studied yet uh, about Samgar and uh, Deborah Barak and De Deborah. I I haven't uh, got through all that lesson. And um, you, you know, just uh, today we just keep going on the the, the next church so that uh, I can uh, follow up after. Okay. So just dealing with Deborah and Barack then. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we 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 were just uh finished Deborah and uh, Barack uh, last week other. Oh, we did that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um yeah so it's the song of Deborah and Barack that we have to look at. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, today we'll study that. Yeah. So just a couple of things about Deborah and Barack though. So so we know that Deborah and Barack were the way mark of the formalization of the message from 9-11 and that brings us to uh, um, that period of time that conflict conflict between Parminder uh, over over the time setting issue right and then it says in the line of Deborah and Brack you have the fourth angel arrives and the fourth angel arrives is the song of Deborah right so it's Judges 5 and so, so when you look at the song of Devon Barak, it's obviously that it's repeating that history in some way, because it's, it's the story of it. Um, and so 
But with that way mark, it's the way mark that ends Colin's prediction. So one of the things that, that we believe is that even though Parminder had been, um, you know, kicked out of the movement, whatever you want, he left the movement, however you want to look at it. We had the split in the movement. Um, his influence still persisted. And it persisted in spite of the fact that many of the people who uh, were carrying on Parminder's ideas um, didn't even realize that they were doing so. That is, they weren't followers of Parminder. They didn't like Parminder. But they didn't realize how much influence he had had in the movement in formulating their own ideas. That is, he had influenced Jeff to the point that Jeff was teaching Parminder's ideas. So even though people didn't like Parminder personally, and they didn't listen to his presentations, and they had suspicions about him, and even though, you know, a lot of the reasons why they didn't like him weren't necessarily the right reasons. So a lot of the people didn't like Parminder because he was a leftist and they were conservatives. But they still were influenced by the, by the ideas. So Colin's prediction was based upon uh, beliefs that had come into the movement through Parminder. And what I had been teaching was countering Parminder's understanding. And so Parminder had this understanding of the lines, of the priests, the Levites, and the Nethanim that uh, was based on a partial truth, but it was a distortion of the lines because the lines, no lines like that existed in Millerite history. Um, and so we came to understand that when we zoom into a way mark, then we can uh, see an, uh, another reform line, like on the next level down. And see, I had figured this out quite a bit before, but I didn't know I didn't know how to explain it. But I knew that we had all of these typical lines, and people kept thinking that we're in the actual line, right? And how could we explain, you know, that we we had a midnight cry on October thirteenth, two thousand eighteen? Well, what line is that in, right? Was it the line of the priests? Well, is there such a line in Millerite history? So one of the things we see here, when you look at this chart of Deborah and Barak, is you have um, Samuel Snow's letters there, right? So you see Samuel Snow's letters at the bottom that from February 16th to June 22nd. This part of Samuel Snow's letters uh, parallels uh, what happened in the movement from June 9th to October 13th. And so this is what we call the prediction before midnight, right? So it was this um, understanding of time that came into the movement. We can see how these periods of time match the periods of time in Samuel Snow's letters. And the chances that that was just a coincidence are astronomically impossible. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but the other thing is the 391 and a half days from October 13th to November 9th are also matched by, if you count from June 22nd, 391 and a half days, that's going to give you July 18th. Now it's July 18th, 1845, not 1844. Um, it's gonna be one year after Samuel Snow's last published letter, but you can see how this parallel, and this was the thing that convinced Jeff that July 18th was the message, right? When he first heard it, because it actually came from first studying Ezekiel and then from Samuel Snow's letters. And I remember the study, writing it on the board for the first time, discovering it. And Jeff had been studying Samuel Snow's letters. In 2018, he was presenting them. And so he understood them well enough to see uh, what was happening. And so he accepted July 18th. But then uh, Parminder and Tess stepped in and told him it was error. And instead of really studying it out to see that it was error, he just accepted that Parminder and Tess were these, uh, you know, prophets or something like that. And he just yielded to them against his better judgment, but he was worn out. And um, 
So anyway, that's that's what happened. And that's why this, this is important, understanding Samuel Snow's letters in relationship to these lines. Now, so here we have Song of Deborah and Barak. Was there any questions about any of this? At what point that uh, Paminder and Tess uh, stated that uh, the wrong point or that in an error? Um, uh, okay, which, what, what are you saying? Which point did they what state what was there? Yeah. Parminder had been teaching error all through the movement and, and he had been secretly working with Tess's mom since at least 2012, but probably even earlier, as early as 2010, he'd been working with Tess's mom. Um, so this was a secret a group they had through email. And um, and then Tess came in uh, because she was interested in patterns. She wasn't really an Adventist. She wasn't even converted. But she 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 had asked Asperger's. So she has uh, uh, sees patterns and things. So I'm not sure what you're asking. What are you asking specifically? Uh, actually, I want to know that uh, uh, about uh, July 18, based upon what that they uh, point out that July 18 is the error. Based on nothing, just that test did not accept it. They had no arguments against it. Uh, the only thing I ever heard was, well, it wasn't line upon line, which of course was not true. It was line upon line. But... Yeah. And that was just from Tabo. He said, oh, it's not truth. It's line. It's not line upon line. But what Tess was doing was not line upon line. So when she did the November 9th, 2019 prediction, it wasn't line upon line. It was a totally different way of, of, of creating a line. But the thing that was interesting about it is that Stephen Jameson, using the lines correctly, had, had previously predicted November 9th, 2019. He did yeah. this months before uh, uh, Tess presented her view. So, so, so we could support November 9th, 2019, not based on Tess's uh, study, but based upon line upon line. And July 18th naturally resulted from that. So it wasn't like July 18th was, but I mean, it had been building for a long time. All of the pieces were being put in place, understanding uh, Ezekiel, um, understanding uh, Josiah Lich's prophecy and the connection between the prophecy of Josiah and the prophecy of Josiah Lich. All these things were put in place. Um, even Ezra 7, 9, understanding the number of days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month being 187 days. And then Samuel Snow's letters with his last letter three days before midnight on July 18th. Um, so all of these things had put July 18th into place. So July 18th wasn't like just come out of nowhere. It was just the natural result of everything that we had been studying for years. And, but in order to counter it, they basically didn't make any arguments. What they did is they attacked me personally and, um, and they used rumors and gossip um, in order to do so. So it was the, the rumors was, were that I didn't support um, the ordination of the ministers. They taught that I rejected the 2520 um, a whole bunch of different attacks that were not even true. Um, so that's how they discredited me. And they continued to try to do that, you know, um, through that period of time. And especially after um, September 7th and November 9th, they just, you know, they, you know, no, no sort of arguments against things. No, here's why Theodore is wrong. It was just all of these character assassinations. So, so that was that was part of the problem. And Jeff got caught up in that as well. So he was believing the information that was being fed to him because he wasn't at the School of the Prophets except to teach occasionally. 
um, but his daughter Bronwyn, she was there and she would give him false reports about me and um, and uh, so and and some other people there. So he just believed the false reports. So it was, you know, when I got kicked out, Jeff wasn't there. He didn't get to hear any of that. Jeff was never there when there was any kind of, you know, conflict supposedly with me. He would just hear about it um, secondhand, yeah, which is not, not a wise way of doing things. So anyway, that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Well, uh, the thing is that they just rejected the methodology. It's just not the uh, July 18th, but because of the methodology, they, they rejected the chronology, right? Yeah. Well, they didn't challenge the chronology or anything. They just didn't do any, they just tacked me, right? So they didn't, they didn't try to show that I was wrong about any date or um, you know, anything like that. They would just say, you know, Theodore, Theodore is a heretic, right? He doesn't support the elders being ordained. You know, Tabo told a lot of stories about me because Tabo was a real problem in Canada. Um, he was, you know, very domineering and um, very emotional about things. So, so he, he, he didn't have any skills in being a leader and everybody knew that, but, you know, we tried to support him and help him, but everything we did to try to help him, he would take as an attack. So, so he was good at spreading rumors about me that, that weren't true. So, um, <clears throat> so anyway, that's, that's how it did. They never, never addressed any of, any of these points, never tried to prove that it was wrong. They just stated it was wrong and that they had decided it was wrong. And um, they had this one little idea that I was Simon Magus, right? Simon the Magician. Um, and, um, and actually, when you look into it, um, like Simon Magus ends up being converted, right? I mean, he's not like some evil person. Um, he just thought that he could purchase the um the gift of of uh you know the spirit or something like that um so there is actually a parallel with me and simon magus so so that was kind of interesting but they they just interpreted it the wrong way okay so um so when we look at the song of deborah and barack it's going to address specifically uh this period of time from november 9th 2019 to January 11th, 2023. So, um, and when we looked at this, we started looking at uh, in a lot of detail into the Hebrew numbers, right? So we had um, first, uh, and also just some of the spans of time. So when we went to the end of Colin's prediction, um, January 11th, 2023, that was the end of his prophetic mirror. Uh, and that prophetic mirror uh, begins with November 9th, 2016, when Trump is made president. Well, it starts there. And, um, and then it's connected to uh, Biden's election as well. So, so you have this prophetic mirror with Biden's election and Trump's election. And, and then it gives you this uh, January 11th, 2023 is this date in which um, is, is connected also with the, the midterm elections. Um, so, so all of these, these things go into place. And so when we look at November 9th, 2019 to January 11th, 2023, you find there's 1160 days. And, and you can see that 11.6 can also re represent 11.9 or 9.11, different ways in which it can be understood. Now, um, so, so we um, then looked at, there's 1190 days from November 9th to February 11th, 2023. 
and um, I'm trying to figure what SJ54 is. So I think uh, Stephen Jameson's birthday, right? So he turns 54, or turned 54 on February 11th. Um, now, Stephen Jameson's birthday, the thing important about it is he was born 11,900 11, days prior to September 11th, 2001. And, um, and then if you count from November 9th, you get his birthday, right? If you count 1,190 days. So this connects to something that Stephen discovered. Uh, he partly discovered it. I partly discovered it. And that was dealing with um, uh, the Josiah Lich's prophecy. So in Jos Josiah Lich's prophecy, I'm just going to try to find this here. Um, here it is. <clears throat> now, are you familiar with this? This chart? Yes. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. So you have Josiah Lich's prophecy and you have the 391 years. Right? Now, the 391 years are 12 periods of 32 years and seven months. Now, 32 years and seven months is 11,900 days, right? And yeah. 1,190 minutes. Now, it was Stephen who discovered it was 1,190 minutes, right? So I knew it was uh, 11,900 days, 0.826561, right? So I knew it was you know, roughly about uh, 1,200 minutes, um, but I never really worked it out in detail. So uh, and the way that we figure that out has to do with the number of months. So in 11,900 days, it's 4,300 lunar months. It's 391 months on uh, the Gregorian calendar because 32 years and seven months is 391 months, right? That makes sense. I'll just show you some of this here. So if we take um, uh, 11,900 days, that's, that's a rounded down, right? Because it's actually going to be 11,900 days and um, 1,190 minutes. So when I first looked at this, I had uh, this number. Well, I'll, I'll show you how, I, how do I do this first. First, I'll do it like this. I'm going to take, it's 43, um, so I'll do this. So if you go um, uh, 33 years times 12 plus seven months, you get 403 months. Those are lunar months. The Islamic calendar has 12 lunar months per year. So every 32 years and seven months, um, they, they have one year more than we do on the Gregorian calendar, right? So that Ramadan moves through the year. That's their big feast or fast, I guess, holiday. It moves through, through the year. Every thirty-three, every thirty-two years and seven months on our calendar, it's thirty-three years and seven months on theirs. So, so that that ends up being if I take this number and I multiply it by twenty-nine point five three zero five. I think it's five eight seven. I think I used that number. Yeah. So that is the length of a lunar month. And so you can see 4, 403 is 11,900. So if I subtract 11,900, I get this decimal. And that decimal, what I would do is normally go times 24, and that would give me 19 hours. So, and then I'd look at the number of minutes times 
uh, 60, right? So I'd have 94 hours and 50 minutes, 19 hours and 50, 50 minutes. But I never thought about saying, well, 19 hours is, is um, 19 times, I have to do this right. So 19 hours times 60 is 1140 minutes. And then I add the 50 minutes and I get 1190 minutes. So, so we have this 11,000, 900 plus 1190. So with Stevens, he can take 11,900 days from when he's born to September 11th. And then he can take that date that pairs with September 11th, which is 11.9. And if he counts 1190 days from that, it comes back to his birthday. So it's just kind of a remarkable uh, coincidence, you'd say, right? So, so this 11,900, let's get through this. So when we get to this chart, there's lots of 11,900 days that show up in our line. So this is what we were looking at. Song of Deborah. So the fact that we have this symbol of 11 9 um, it is, is pretty important. Now, when we go to um, verse there, so go to Judges, and that's going to be Judges chapter 5, verse 8. Albert, I think uh, yeah. the thing you have just presented is really uh, interesting. However, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't think that is uh, widely acceptable by uh, some people because, uh, yeah, this, uh, you know, it's just oh, a, yeah, because we have a person's yeah. birthday in there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. And except that we have to recognize that Stephen is the one who discovered uh, this 1190 minutes, right? So the fact that it connects with him. Now, and he never figured out that he was born 11,900 days before September 11th, right? Oh. Yeah, so I know not everybody's, it's not something that you would generally present. I mean, you yeah. would present the 11,900 uh, days and 1109 minutes. That is, you would show that uh, Josiah Lich's prophecy is connected to Islam through the Islamic calendar, right? But anyway, th that symbol exists within these lines. So however somebody wants to do it, you could just say, um, you know, you could take this first part. But if you're going to deal with this 1190 days to Stephen Jameson being 54, you would have to understand Josiah Lich's prophecy and why why it marks individuals' birthdays in this way, right? So some people don't accept that. They don't like that somebody's birthday is in a line. I mean, yeah. this was criticisms of me because my birthdays end up being in the lines. And, you know, when I met my first wife and when I got married and all these different types of things all end up in the lines. Um, but the, the point that I've made is that we should all be in the lines, right? that you know, there are people who are born on August 11th and there's people born on July 21st, um, yeah. right? Um, you know, so all of these, even Jeff's birthday, we'll look at, at William Miller's birthday. He's born February 15th and yeah. the Pope is going to be taken captive on his birthday, his 17th birthday, I think it is, or 16th, 16th birthday. Um, in 1798. So, so William Miller's birthday, you know, is it important? Well, 
he turns 16 when the Pope is taken captive. And he's born in 1782. And 1782 is an iteration of 1872, July 18, 2020, right? That symbol. So we find this with Jeff's birthday, November 7th, has all kinds of prophetic significance. Um, so so I think I, I don't think it's something that a person can just set aside or even when, you know, when I'm uh, when, when I'm converted on August 11th, 1980, well, that's going to be to July 18th, the same number of days that the manna fell. Right. I mean, and the thing is, we discover that, you know, when we discover the number of days the manna fell, uh, we discover, oh, you know, that happens to be from my conversion on August 11th, 1980. And it's during the Glacier View meetings. That's on August 15th. Um, Desmond Ford's going to have his credentials removed, right? So so in that history is when I become converted. You know, and then I'm, I'm going to be baptized on December 25th, 1982. You know, a significant symbol in our lines, right? So all of these things happen but they're connected to Bible truths, right? So they're not, they're not the proof of anything, right? They're like a second or a third witness maybe, but we don't derive a doctrine from them. You know, we don't say because, you know, somebody is born on a certain date, um, uh, this proves, you know, that he's a prophet or anything like that, right? And even Tess, she was born on November 9th, um, 1981, uh, uh, on November 9th, 1991, right? So, and then her hero, uh, uh, AOC, you know who AOC is, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know who AOC is? Mm -hmm. No, actually not. I, I don't. She's, an American, she's yeah. an American congresswoman. Uh, I can't remember her whole name. Her last name is Cortez. Uh, something and Antonia Ocasio Cortez. Ocasio Cortez. But anyway, that's Tess's hero. She's a leftist. She's an extreme leftist, and she was born on um, October 13th at noon in 1989, 391 and a half days before Tess was born. Mm -hmm. So that same October 13th and November 9th that we have, that I use to confirm Tess, Tess's date from noon on October 13th, well, this AMC, she was born at noon in New York on October 13th. 1989, 391 days uh, before uh, Tess. And so you can see that this ends up being, um, uh, you know, it's just like this strange coincidences of these birthdays, but they don't prove that somebody's a Christian or that they're, you know, to be listened to or they're a prophet or anything like that. It just shows that God is, pays attention to all of these details. So anyway, with the song of Deborah and Barak, and I can't remember what there is uh, about the Levitical chiasm. They chose new gods, then was war in the gates. There's something about, oh, well, you got the word war is 3091. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to leave that because there's, there's too many things in there for me to... Mm -hmm. But... Um, so anyway, what you have is you have, for some reason, I put this 11.9 here, and that's what I'm not sure why, where that came from, where this 11.9 came from, from chapter 5, verse 8a. Um, so I don't remember now why, why I put that in there. But anyway, we have November 9th. We have the symbol of 1190 right in there. And there's going to be 1190 days to James, uh, Stephen Jameson's 54th birthday. Now, 
this is the Levitical chiasm. So if we go from November 9th, um, we're going to have this January 11th. This is part of that Levitical chiasm that begins on October uh, or June, June 9th, 2018. And um, there was a shield and a spear seen among the 40,000 in Israel. So I'm not really sure. I wish I knew why this marks this. They chose. New, okay, I remember now. They chose new gods, and war was in the yeah. gates. The conflict between Parminder's movement and ours, right? And this is Sisera, right? This is in the story of the Battle of Sisera, and then it says, um, "And there was a shield. Was there a shield or a spear seen among forty thousand in Israel?" So um, there was something about the number forty thousand. I wish I remembered all of this. And maybe if you can't find it in, in um in the notes. So there must be something about forty thousand. I know 40,000 hours is 1,666 days. Um, 40,000 minutes is 27.7 days. So I'm not really sure. I wish I could remember all of this stuff. Some of this stuff we just went through briefly, but um, uh, let me see here. So Judges 5.10. Yeah, see, I'm a little rusty on this song of Deborah because we went through it very briefly. Um, I'm going to have the H91, the H77. So uh, these different uh, Hebrew numbers. So we have in Judges 5.10, it says speak. Now that word speak means to meditate. And so it says, uh, speak ye that ride on white horses. The word ride is um, this number once it's 7392. I'm not showing you the screen, so you can't even see what I'm looking at. I'll go here. <clears throat> okay, so you got the 7392, it's 168 times 44, or 264 times 28. And then this meditate 78 times 24, which equals, uh, if I take the number and break it in that way, it becomes uh, 1872. So that July 18, 2020. Uh, uh, this word way, 1870. Um, and you can see the 187 in there, rideth by the way. And then, um, uh, so that's the word way. And then, And then, and then they're going to walk by the way, right? So walk by the way. So that word walk 1980, that's the year I am uh, converted on August 11th. And then we have the name Deborah. So the name Deborah is H1683, which 168 times 3 equals 504, which divided by 2 is 252. Barak, his name is... Um, H1301, and this represents uh, 1,301,000 days. So that, I think, where do I have that diagram? Might have been. So anyway, that is a period of 187 metonic cycles and 111 months. Um, and I'm going to just see if I can find that number. Oops. I know this gets a little bit... Um, It's 
So it's 3,562 years. We divided by two is 1,781. Um, and what, which has a 178 and a 187 together, which together make 365. And three, 1301 is the 112th prime number. So, um, but it's this period of time here. So this is from when the, the Israelites first get their calendar, April 12th, 1533 BC. Right, so that's that's the first day of the first month in the year of the Exodus, and it's one million three hundred and one thousand days to April fifth, twenty thirty. So that's pretty precise to take that symbol of Barak and to tie it back to this structure. So one of the things about Barak, if you're understanding uh, Sisera. And um, yeah. so if you're understanding this story about, and here you can see it again, this is all these different uh, first days of the first months, the insignificance, the one in 457 BC, it's 1109 lunar years in one month, um, uh, from the first day of the first month here to 27 AD is 490 prophetic years, less two weeks. From that date to here is 1872 lunar years and 10 lunar months. And then from here to here is 1946 lunar months to 911. And then uh, here it's 186 years or 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months to April 5th, 2030. So, so these become significant in understanding the symbol of, of what Barak represents. He represents a message of chronology and time, of symbolic use of numbers that counteracts Parminder's message, right? So all through this time, God had been, been using me to go through and study the prophetic periods in the Old Testament that, that, that are the foundation of Adventism and to find these symbols and structures. Uh, but when Parminder's movement came on the scene, he's going to renounce all of that, right? So he's going to fight against that because he knows that what I'm teaching about chronology undermines his message. And uh, to do that, he can't challenge me directly. So what he does anytime I talk to him, he just lies to me. He'll tell me, oh, yeah, I think what you're doing is really good. I have no problem with you. You know, just keep doing those studying, keep presenting stuff. Um, but in reality, that's not what he thinks. He actually considers me to be an enemy. Um, the only time that he briefly has an interest is when I support November 9th with this calculation of 391 and a half days. And... Because Tess had left the School of the Prophets, she had gone back to Australia, uh, Arminder, on a whim, just because he saw me present this in the morning class on Sunday, he gives me space to present. Um, and so he thinks that Tess is going to be happy with this, that she's going to be happy with what I'm presenting because it supports what she's doing. But when word gets back to her that I did something that supported November 9th, she tells Parminder that it's error and that he needs to oppose it. And then when Jeff goes uh, after that camp meeting, he goes to Brazil, he's going to run into, um, uh, he's going to run into um, uh, Tess and she's going to, and Parminder, and they're going to tell him that he has to um, not just oppose July 18, but also my support for November 9th. And it takes Jeff a while. When he gets back uh, to Arkansas, he won't even talk to me. He won't even look me in the eye. Um, uh, so and that's in November, right? So, so Jeff had already been told that what I was doing was error and that July 18 was error, but also the 391 and a half was error. And it, and, and it really disappointed Jeff because he knew it was truth. So he didn't know how to reconcile that. So when 
all these rumors and stories started being built up, uh, that was enough for him to say, okay, you know, Theodore's obviously giving a false message. So, but then of course he's going to pick up July 18th after Parminder is, you know, his apostasy into this uh, wokeism. So, so anyway, that's, that's what we have. We have this message of Deborah and Barak that is going to be about July 18th. And that's going to be the thing that undoes this. So this November 9th, that's that date. And we can see there's a period of darkness that precedes November 9th. And that has to do with the understanding of July 18th. And that's what's going to be opened up um, from September 7th to November 9th. Jeff is then on November 9th. He's fully supporting July 18th. And then we have this increase of knowledge, all these presentations on July 18th. On January 11th, Jeff recognizes the Levitical chiasm. And then April 26th, uh, 2020, I email Jeff and tell him that July 18th is possibly a failed prediction. That just like November 9th and just like the Mayan date, um, that this prediction is, is possible to fail. And of course, you know, Jeff says he's going to read the email. He's going to watch the video I did, but he never responds. So he never, you know, discusses with me about this failed prediction. Now the prediction does fail. And on July 17th, I present a, a study showing if the prediction fails, why it fails. And then I present that again on July 19th. Um, but people don't accept my explanation, even though it's a very solid explanation, is that we were meant to have a false prediction, just as the Millerites did. The date was correct, but the event does not fall on that date. It's connected to it. What's going to happen in Nashville is connected to our prediction. It just doesn't occur on that date. Right? And then um, on March 7th, 2021, um, so we're picking up on the word rehearse, and that's where we're going to examine the foundations, right? And then on December 25th, we have uh, three different things that are presented, or three different symbols, I guess. We have Stephen recognizes the 777 years from 457 BC to 321. And then uh, this is in verse 512. Um, well, 512 is two to the power of nine. So that's the 20th day of the ninth month symbol, right? So, and we have Colin's prediction, of course. And there's going to be 383 days from December 25th to January 11th. They're both going to be the 20th day of the ninth month. Um, if I remember correctly. Uh, and that's a, a Hebrew year and a deficient embolismic year. So it's got an extra month, but it's a short year instead of 384, which is the regular and, or, and 385, which is the complete year. So 383 days. And I'm just going to confirm doing this right. Um, it's not, it is that many days, but it's not the 20th day of the ninth month. It's the 18th day of the 10th month. Um, but anyway, it's that number of days. So that symbol, um, yeah, there's another one where we have the 20th day of the ninth month. Um, so December 25th. So that that's that number of days. It symbolizes a deficient embolismic year. And then we have, of course, all these way marks, right? So you're going to have the close of probation. That's going to be the close of probation for um, that movement. And then we have uh, another close of probation. So 5, 14, 31. So the question is, what is that close of probation? So I have two closes of probation, 5, 12, and 5, 14 to 31. And... I actually do believe that um, the, the Canadian American groups 
have um, closed their probation. Not as individuals, there's individuals who haven't, but uh, those groups, they've completely rejected July 18th now. And um, they've decided to follow Jeff. So if Jeff, if, if Jeff is, is a type of Miller, or Miller's a type of Jeff, then just as Miller, after the disappointment, doesn't accept the light, well, then Jeff doesn't either. So Jeff fulfills the role of Miller, even though he tried not to. Because remember, Jeff tried to uh, stay out of the picture because he didn't want to make the same mistake as Miller. Right? That's why he retired. But he couldn't help himself. And, and the date that he chose to um, start writing again or start publishing his writings was the last was the last day or the Sabbath of our camp meetings in the summer. So July 29th, he publishes his first letter. And that happens to be the Sabbath that we're doing that camp meeting. And, you know, he heard a voice say to him when he, this is the story anyway, whether it's true, it's distorted, but he was riding his tractor, his garden tractor, and he heard a voice saying, what are you doing here? Now, he interpreted that he needed to start writing again and opposing. But if you think about it, he's doing this, my understanding is, when we're having our camp meeting. So God could have simply been saying, what are you doing here? You should be in Leduc, Alberta, right, in Canada at this camp meeting. But he doesn't interpret it that way. So, so I, I believe that they've closed their probation. Um, you know, again, not as individuals, just as those symbolically as those groups. And they represent two different groups within the Millerite movement, right? Um, and it, in a sense, you could almost say three different groups that existed because FFA would represent uh, the majority of the Millerites who became the first day Adventists, they didn't accept uh, the Sabbath. And then you had uh, uh, two other groups that were uh, you know, one group that was Samuel Snow's group. And then you had, um, and so Samuel Snow's group, uh, they go off into sort of fanaticism. And then you have um, within the group that Ellen White had in early writings, you had people who initially accepted July 18th or October 22nd. Um, but you have those that go back to old Jerusalem and those that continue time setting, trying to find a new date. So they, they accept the seventh month movement. They accept October 22 or July 18th as true, uh, but they're, they're not accepting all of the light. And so they end up rejecting it in the end. So you got, and that, so I guess you in a sense have the fourth group, which is the ones that form the Seventh-day Adventist church, right? So they're going to accept October 22nd and all of the light that comes from that. So if we're going to look at a parallel to Millerite history, that would be the best parallel. Any thoughts on any of that? No, that's clearly. Okay. So here, this is dealing with Judges 14 to um, uh, 31. Judges 5, verse 14 to 31. So this is addressing um, that close of probation here that we talk about on at the end. The fourth angel arrives. So it's like a repeat of history. Now, this is going to go from December 25th, 2021 to April 5th, 2030. That's the way that we had looked at this. And when we were doing this, we were studying um, uh, our history and we came to notice some things. So from October 13th, 2018, it brings us to December 24th, 2022. This is gonna be in this section. It's gonna talk about this invitation. Um, it's got a bunch of details. I'm not gonna go through them all, um, but, uh, 
there is um, uh, Tanakh. This is this word, 8590. And it is in, uh, let me see, where is it? I find it. Um, so it's Judges 519. The kings came and fought. They fought, then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. Now, um, it's a little bit obscure, but if you take the number 1533 and you put it into an octal form, so in base eight, it's going to be 859. So you can see from October 13th, 2018 to December 24th, 2022, there's that 1,533 days. And then from July 18, there's 859 days to November 24th, 2022. And so we marked these way, these way marks. Uh, the other thing that was interesting about this word, uh, Tanakh, is, um, and I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to remember how it goes. So we go Tanakh. It shows up here. I'll show you here. It's going to show up seven times in the Bible, right? So it shows up seven times. Uh, the first time is in Joshua 21, uh, uh, 12, 21. And 12, 21, what's the significance of 12, 21? If you multiply 12 times 21, you get 252. And then it's also in Joshua 17, 11. If you multiply 17 by 11, you get 187. It's also in Judges 127, which is a symbol of July 21st, midnight. Right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so those three in Joshua represent... Uh, and um, so, and in Joshua twenty one twenty five, uh, well, twenty one uh, times twenty five is five twenty five. So, um, but there it's just spelled differently. You can see there. So, so twenty one times. 25 is 525. So you have the 252 and the 525, which gives you 777. Um, yeah, so it's in Judges uh, 519. Um, and in Judges 519, that's just the one we looked at. And then it's also in 1 Kings 412 and 2 Chronicles 729. So so the four in jo the three in Joshua all are part of this structure. <laughs> Does that make sense to you, or is that too fast? No, uh, I, I can't get it. But, uh, you know, um, while I'm uh, presenting the uh, Power of Nine lesson, uh, some people said that, why do we always multiply, uh, multiply the number, but not divide it, or minus, or plus well, we the do. number? We, we yeah. do divide, and we do subtract, and we do add. Um, um, so, so when we look at a number, so let's say I looked at 1221, the obvious thing, because I already know 12 times 21 is 252. I also know 17 times 11 is 187. So I'm going to see the obvious first, right? Um, but yes, often we add things together, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's just the obvious things there. So yes, we do do other things. Uh, we do divisions. And you can see that in Aram's uh, presentations from the summer camp meeting, he shows a lot of these dividing of numbers. Um, you know, one of the common ones that we did originally, uh, this, is, this is actually long before um, connecting 1840. 
Uh, let me see here. Um, and I'm trying to remember how that goes. So 1840, that's going to be when we have this um, um, Josiah Lich's prophecy, right? And you're going to have mm -hmm. 2001. And, and I think what we do is, I think, how did we do that? Um, so 391.5. So this number showed up. Um, yeah, so now I remember what it is. So if you take 2001 and you divide it by 391.5, and then you multiply it times 360, you get 1840. So it shows that 1840, 2001 are connected by the prophetic year, because in 1840, it's going to be the year day principle. It's going to be confirmed. And then we can get 391. Now, the thing about the 391.5 is at that time, they're just taking it as the 391 years and a half a month, right? 0.5 of a month, 15 days. So they don't they don't know that there's 391 years and a half for the kings of Judah, right? So they don't know that. Um, so they so they don't have all those pieces, but they can still take that 391.5 and use it. And this is like 10 years, like this goes back, you know, 2010, maybe even, right? So 10 years before July 18, um, that we were using this symbol of 391.5 and connecting Josiah Lich's prophecy, the empowerment of the first angel um, with in Millerite history with the empowerment of the first angel in our history, 9-11, right, in 2001. So it's pretty interesting. So, but you can see there, there's a division going on, right? Uh, I mean, a division is just the reverse of a multiplication. So I'm not really sure why it's that significant because you could do it the other way. I mean, it could just simply take 1840 uh, times 391.5, right? I get this number and then divide it by 360. Or did I... Right, to get 2001. So I can do the, the, the calculation different ways. It's still gonna be the same thing. The relationship, the ratio is uh, 391.5 over 1840 equals, or pardon me, 360 over 1840 equals 391.5 over 2001, right? As a mathematical formula. It just equals that. So, um, so that is if I go uh, 360 divided by one by 1840, it equals this number, right? 195652. So I'm going to put that into memory plus, and then I'm going to take uh, 391.5 divided by 2001, and I'm going to get the same number. Right. So if I go minus memory recall, I'll get zero. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, so these types of things, um, yeah, it's, it, I, I'm not sure, but anyways, that, that helps answer your question. about um, why we don't do that, why, because we, we do do that. So if we take Deborah, we do things like factorization. Um, one, six, eight, three is three times three times 11 times 17 or 187 times nine or 168 times three, which is 502 divided by two, which is 252. So there's all different calculations we can do with Deborah's Hebrew number. With Barak, of course, we have we times it by a thousand and we get 1,301,000 days, right? And then 1301 is the 112th prime number, right? And of course, you can see 
2112, it represents uh, um, the idea is 21 times 12, right, which is 252. Uh, we also looked at the gematria of that. Um, so the combined gematria of Barak, if it's, um, let me see, no, it's the multi, the reverse product of, of the verse, maybe it is of Barak. I'm not sure what it is we're looking at there. The normal sum, uh, 33. No, it's, that's of his name, Barak, is, um, if you divide it by 13, is 187, 187,200. Um, then you got, uh, you know, Benjamin's name, all the different tribes that are involved in, that he calls, right? It mentions all these tribes, uh, you know, Benjamin, Ephraim, Makir, uh, Issachar, Reuben, Dan, Gilead, Asher, Zebulun, Naphtali, and Manasseh, right? And all the analysis of their names. So there's a lot of different things, symbols we look at. They're not how we arrive at our understanding. Um, they are simply ways of analyzing what we have done. And, um, you know, so you can see 364 days, that's 52 times seven. So it's 52 weeks. That's a year of 364 days is 524,160 minutes divided by seven times four, 28, right, is 18,720. That's from um, December 25th, 2021 to December 24th, 2022. This is where this invitation happens. And then we have this camp meeting, right? So the camp meeting is going to be on July 24th uh, to, 30, to 30th, right? But it's gonna be on the Sabbath of that camp meeting that Jeff is going to publish his first article. So, um, so it's gonna be on July 29th. So if we go to, to Future for America, uh, let me see here. Okay, so <clears throat> show you this. Now, I don't know if you watched any of the videos where I analyze Jeff's uh, articles, but you can see the first one here. Oh, pardon me. It's on July 31st, uh, 2023, that it's published. And you see here. So it was on. So it's right after a camp meeting. I think they changed the date there because I'm pretty sure it was. Oh, here it is. There's the first one. So that's number two or number one uh, of Elijah. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is the first one he publishes. It's on July 29th. I don't know if you can see that date there. Right. 2023. So that's going to be the Sabbath of our camp meeting. And uh, so Jeff has published this article which is a pretty general article. Like it's not, there's nothing particularly startling about it. Um, um, but he publishes that first article and that's because God had told him, what are you doing here? And I don't know the exact date that God said that to him. Um, so I don't know how long from when God said, what are you doing here to when he publishes this article but that's when he's going to publish it. So I think that's significant. And he marks that as the coming of the comforter, that date. Now, the way that he's using his lines is really confusing because he's just mixing up all of these different lines and stories with no sort of um, rhyme or reason other than he has things that he believes. And so he doesn't have anything objective Right? It's a very subjective, and it's not like Jeff, because Jeff was always very logical and also very inclusive in having other people involved. Now he is taking the position that he's the prophet and that uh, he, the mistake he made was listening to anyone else. Right? He should never have listened to any other voice um, in what he was teaching. And that's kind of bizarre because that's 
I mean, the whole basis of this final movement is that we are Samuel Snow, right? This movement is not an individual. It is, it's a movement, right? And God's leading that movement. You know, so, you know, if I was to say, yes, I'm the prophet, you have to listen to me because God has chosen me, that would be an error. If anybody does that, because that's not how it is in the last days, according to the spirit of prophecy. Um, Ellen White is to guide us. The Bible and the spirit of prophecy are to guide us. And God is guiding a movement, not an individual. So <clears throat> any, any thoughts on that? So uh, it means that uh, Elder Chap still write the article uh, on the website. Do you, think okay. the, do, do you think that these are the work of Elder Chap? Well, I believe Jeff is writing them, though I do believe that he's been under an influence. So the one is he lives in the same yard as his daughter, Bronwyn, and Bronwyn hates me and, and my wife, Heidi. And um, um, she definitely always struggled with, um, you know, basically with the Bible and with Christianity and Adventism. Um uh, mostly that she was in the movement because her dad wanted her to be involved and he thought it was a way of winning his children is to have them involved. So Clayton and Bronwyn being involved, even though they weren't really converted, um, was just a way of, of helping his family and his wife as well. She was not, um, she was not really a believer, um, but she was involved. And so, you know, they had a lot of, he has a lot of influence from those people, from his family and other people um, who have been opposed to the message all along. So there's a lot of pressure on him to reject July 18th and to go back um, to what he was teaching in the past. But now that he goes back to what he's teaching in the past, it doesn't make any sense, right? Because we've moved along with this advancing light. And if you say, well, everything that came after 2012 is error, that we're going to go back to Habakkuk's two tables, um, you have a really hard time explaining that from Millerite history. Unless you see Jeff is Miller. If Jeff is Miller, then he's Miller after October 22nd, 1844. Because Miller never prior to October 22nd, goes back and says, we've completely been in error. And, you know, I should have been the prophet and we shouldn't have listened to Samuel Snow or anything like that. He doesn't do that until after October 22nd. And, you know, and not until, you know, July 18th that he begins writing this uh, rejection of, of October 22nd. And even then it's still, it's not a complete rejection. It advances until finally he he thinks the whole seventh month movement was an error, right? Before he dies. So, so Jeff is going in that direction. So I, I would say, you know, the logical thing is that Jeff is just fulfilling the role that Miller fulfilled. Um, and these articles aren't logical, right? So they're they don't follow consistently. They, they kind of jump around. Now I do know from a firsthand uh, account. So from Jeff, for instance, I know that Jeff is ill, right? Now, what he has is congestive heart failure. So congestive heart failure um, does affect the intellect. And he's had it now since 2016, since he was diagnosed. So he's had it now for seven years. Um, um, so all of the fatigue that he was having, um, uh, some of the problems that he was, was having, uh, now he's done a lot to try to, um, uh, you know, mitigate that by, you know, living a healthy lifestyle, but it can affect, uh, the intellect, especially over time. Um, 
So um, let me see. So, you know, he's not using regular medical treatment, which is good. He's using uh, natural treatment. So I'm just trying to figure here. I know you can see this here. Um, anyway, this one doesn't tell us much about it. <clears throat> go here. Um, so heart failure adversely affects various cognitive domains, including attention, learning ability, and working memory, executive functions, and information processing speed. Um, so, it's, so it's probably likely that his cognitive functions are not at their, their peak. And this would explain the way his articles are written. So, and um, people don't usually survive con congestive heart failure on average. After five years, they usually succumb to it. So because he's doing a lot of natural things, he's, he's doing better than, than the average. But um, he was already having some problems back in 2018 when I was there um, with his attention and some of his memory. So if you think back, well, that's now five years ago. Um, this would explain his articles. Plus, Bronwyn is the editor of his articles. So Jeff doesn't write these articles from start to finish with all the spelling and grammar and structure. They're, they're edited by Bronwyn. And um, so her she has a part to play in these articles. Um, Okay, any other thing? It's 8.13, so. No, uh, yes, you know, I just, I, uh, uh, for me to understand that our chef, he uh, is not familiar with the computer, how to use as well. Uh, so that's why I, uh, I, I doubt, I doubted about the articles, I just read it down. Okay, yeah, so, um, you know, his son Clayton is the one who creates the websites yeah. and puts the articles up. So yeah, so Jeff doesn't put the articles up. He he produces, produces the basic documents. They're gonna be uh, uh, rewritten by Bronwyn and then they're gonna be put up by Clayton. So Clayton is gonna manage the website. Mm. Right, so that's how their family works. So anyway, there's lots of stuff in um, these lines. So if you have any questions about anything, once you go through the notes, I can't remember what I put in the notes. Um, I know the notes are not going to be as detailed as our studies. Yeah. And um, I don't think I actually really address uh, the song of Deborah and Brack in the sermon notes or in the sermons just because it was too much detail. I might address the 1,301,000 days, but that would be it. Um, um, yeah, so I deal with that. Yeah, I do deal a bit with uh, judges 14 to 15. I have the chart and I just explained some of the symbols, right? So. So right now, what time is it there? Uh, it's uh, 10, 15. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So here it's 8.15 in the morning. Yeah. Okay, should, so... Do um, you have something to do? I don't have anything to do. Uh, my wife is actually right now at the, the mechanics. She's going to be there for a couple hours because uh, oh. the car has a leak in the tire. So she left. But do you want to still ask questions? No, uh, I, I think the lesson is really clearly for me. And uh, I, I will watch later to yeah. point out more details about the lesson. Yeah. Um, you know, because uh, about uh, the period of time after um, December 25th of uh, 2021, to me, that's really unfamiliar to me, uh, especially at the time of uh, 20, 20, uh, 2022, 
Spain train is free because uh, I don't know what happened there, especially uh, to our movements. Mm. Yeah, and it, it and it's it's, I mean it's like here, um, like I mean I'm here, right? Yeah. But even then, I I don't really understand why things have unfolded the way they have. Like I don't I don't understand um, people's behavior. Uh, why people are so emotional? Yeah. Why people get so upset about things? Um, why they're so critical of others? It just doesn't make, really make sense to me. I've tried all kinds of things to reconcile with Colin, uh, with um, uh, Brother Fontenot with um, uh, Steve Welk from the U.S. And, um, you know, just, there's just like total resistance. Like no, in, nobody wants to talk. And then, you know, Colin did a, a study where, you know, he convinced me, you know, to start doing Daniel chapter 11, right? Because so, he said I had problems. And he was telling people I was never going to do it. You know that that I was, and I, I don't know what he's talking about—a promise. I just had suggested, you know, at one point maybe we'll study Daniel chapter eleven next, and then we ended up doing examining the lines instead, um, uh, or understanding the lines. And uh, so he was telling people I was never going to do it. I was too scared and stuff like that. So. We visited him before the camp meeting, and I said, yeah, after the camp meeting, we're going to do Daniel chapter 11. So he was watching them for a while, and then he did a, a study at his house where they went through my video. And uh, so he first did it before I, I was there, right? So I was just watching online. Um, and then he did it again, so I showed, I showed up. And, and this was just basically an attack on me. It wasn't... Um, uh, you know, it wasn't a proper study. It wasn't like an open study. It was just an attack on what I said in my video, which was completely misrepresented because uh, he took uh, me answering a question that Dwight had asked and and something that, you know, I just were looking at like for the first time. And he, he took that and made this video. And then I was supposed to have time to comment at the end, but he didn't give me any time. So I had to stay later. And all I said basically at the end was, what you did was not helpful. What you did was not, um, you know, like it wasn't it wasn't correct to to do this type of of video. Like you should have honestly looked at what was being said, not misrepresent what was being said. But um, you know, since then he hasn't contacted me. He hasn't talked to me. He hasn't. Uh, um, and all I hear from other people who are at his studies is basically, it's just, it's always an attack against me. So, so I did listen to one of his other studies that uh, uh, they had recorded and what he says about me. So, so those types of things don't really make sense to me because if somebody's teaching error, you should be able to sit down and discuss it. And, um, and because that's what I've been trying to do, I've been trying to look fairly at everything that everyone's saying and consider it. Because I do believe that God gave light to Colin and to Dilio and to other people in the movement. But if we can't accept the light that God is giving to the movement as a whole, and we're just going to attack individuals, then I don't see how that that's helpful. You know, it's it's so. So it's, it's, you know, it's very surprising to me, you know, and Colin was a good friend of mine. I've known him since uh, 2012. So uh, maybe even earlier, let me think. 2000, yeah, 2012. Used to go to studies at his house every Saturday night. So, you know, that's like 11 years. Right? <laughs> it's a long time. And for him to just turn away from for me as an individual, like attack me as an individual, rather than studying. And, and the differences we have are so minimal, right? You know, like, I, I don't understand how somebody can believe like 99.9% .9 the same, but a few little things that we disagree on 
can cause such division and hatred and anger and emotion. So, <clears throat> so anyway, um, yeah. So in these notes, you know, go through them. If you have questions, you can ask me. Okay. So let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we pray for one another. We pray for this movement. We pray for Jeff, his family, uh, the people in the different groups, the individuals who are you're still speaking to their heart. We pray for the people in Vietnam and other places around the world. And um, we are thankful, Lord, for the way that you work in our lives. Continue to be with us in our studies. Uh, give us Correct us when we are in error and um, help us to reflect your character. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs>